and welcome back to Ralph's house. Yeah, I'm kind of falling over myself now. Um, I knew it would happen. <laughs> and it's a bit difficult to organise this garden at the moment uh, due to the ongoing jobs I've got. Um, <laughs> looking at all, all of them long term. Uh, this shed is leaning forward. I think it's rotting out the bottom. That's going to have to go at some point. Uh, but not now, it's not going to fall over. Now, what's my priority job this week? If you've been following along, I'm not going to pile up stuff here. I'm horrendous, isn't it? Um, but I've got to get this, I've got to get the back of this cleared off because I want to be able to put a couple of vehicles on the back and to be able to skip, get a skip in at the end. And that means this has got to go this week. So this is how I'm proposing to do it. I mean, look at all this stuff. It's, there's just so much. All the wood I can burn, because uh, that's nice and dry. So that'll go up in no time. If we go out the back, if you remember, I've replaced that. And uh, this will, this side will be going. So the fence will just continue. So that will open up the width of the garden. But this garage has got to go. Uh, there's a few reasons for it. And yeah, I know it's all useful storage. But it's come to the end of its useful life. Oh. See where all the bars rusting through on the concrete. And even worse down there. Yeah, it has come to the end of its useful life. This. People have tried to patch it over the years. Don't know if it was my dad or who it was, but anyway, it has been patched. So I've got to take this garage down on my own. Now, how do you take down a concrete garage? Well, they're all a little bit different. Um, these roof struts, as well as supporting the roof, tie the sides of the garage in because they're bolted up here. <coughs> so what you don't want to do is remove them um, until you really have to because they tie everything together but because I've taken the lintel off the front there isn't one this end so these posts are already floating well, to give you an idea and you see the movement, movement in that at the top yeah and they're all bolted all the way down so with the with brackets that's all that holds it together so what we'll do is we'll leave that where it is and these I think they're asbestos fairly sure and they're held on by this see that bolt that hooks around there take those off with the angle grinder and wherever else it's held on pull these first two roofing sheets off which will open this up and that then means that these will be free to move so I've got to take out this post go gently with it um, you know wear steel toe caps then take out these four sections there's four of them all the way to the bottom uh, and then I'm left with another post each side and that roofing bar and then I repeat this process again take the uh, asbestos sheets off take out this supporting bar and then take out that post take out those four panels and keep going till I've done the lot uh, yeah not the easiest thing and I've got a vehicle in there but that, that won't be a problem um, I should just be careful where they all go the post should just fall straight into the into the alleyway here at the back yeah so that's what I've got to do um, on me Todd, but it'll be alright, I'll be fine with it. Just go nice and steady, lump hammer, chisel, just to leave the stuff, crowbar, and uh, gradually get all these sections out, and I'm going to have to stack these concrete panels down the other end of the garden. 
unfortunately, which means when the skip comes, I'm going to have to move them back up again, but that's uh, not a lot I can do about that. So, that's where we are. So in the morning, I will start dismantling the front two sections of the garage with enthusiasm and vigour. <laughs> if you believe that, you believe anything. Yeah, um, I've got some parts of the old fence which I'm actually going to be able to reuse uh, because my front fence, very short panels on that, and most of this is pretty good. It's only, you know, the ends that have rotted away, so I should be able to cut those and reuse those for the front. There's no point in buying wood for that if I don't need to. I do need Irish rails at the front. There you go. Uh, I've got to be careful what I cut away in shrubs though because you know I found a nest in there but I was very carefully checked it and it's from last year so I've pulled that out. Uh, I just can't deal with these yet because well at least not until the autumn. Um, I haven't seen any birds flying in and out of them and I will look but um, I think it's likely I'm not going to tackle any of those bushes till the autumn and they can go out in the normal brown bin bit by bit uh, but the rest really needs clearing out what I could ideally do with is having no vehicles on the back and getting a grabber to come and clear it because they'll clear tons of it in no time faster than you can do it in a skip and actually it works out cheaper uh, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. It's very difficult to get a grabber over vehicles. There's just too many issues. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to cut all this back as well. Whatever this plant is, that's got to be hacked down to the bottom. Um, this bed's going to have to be dug out uh, and get it level with that. That's actually a brick path, that actually. Um, but I'm going to go over all of this with hardcore and bits of the concrete, some parts of the garage, just to get that level so I've got a level area for two vehicles and then I don't know in the future the only thing I can do is push the vehicles further down the garden um, when I'm ready to get this concreted as I mentioned in my last video um, it's really difficult to get any builders or plasterers or concreters or anything to do anything at the moment because they are absolutely flat out um, trying to get one to do any work for you is difficult. I don't blame them, they're just chocker. And until that eases off. Um, so really I'm looking at probably next year to be able to get that concreted properly, but I will do, even if I have to do it myself. So yeah, it'd be nice to see that bit of fence gone. And then uh, temporarily I'm going to block this end off. Um, and then put a six foot fence right across at the back. I won't put a gate in it. Uh, not for now, it's just really, I just want to secure the garden. I can look at putting a gate in at a later date. Yeah, so that's where we are today. And uh, I've moved quite a bit of stuff today. But in the morning, um, it suggests that it might be dry and windy, which suits me. <laughs> it hasn't been for the last couple of days. I've had to work in the wet. Um, and then we'll get cracking in the morning and start taking this garage on, down and I will video it as much as I can uh, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had to dismantle a concrete garage so they are all different but I'm just going to show you how I take apart this one I've already started to take the guttering off so anyway we'll see you in the morning well it's Wednesday morning and a package has arrived this is a big one I'm not going to open it um, it came from Just Campers, who uh, specialise in mostly air-cooled VW uh, vehicles, historic vehicles, that sort of stuff. And I'm not going to cover it in Ralph's house, uh, but I do have a Beetle. And uh, unfortunately, it's sustained, well, it's been parked for about 18 years, because I haven't really had a chance to do anything with it. And, uh, but, and I was going to let it go, because I felt... 62 maybe I should um, but I, I didn't I thought no I'll take it on um, but on the day we went to pick it up on the recovery truck overnight some little tyke had decided to throw bricks through a couple of the windows 
quarter light was already broken but then so was the driver's window and so was the windscreen not great um, but I walked around it I said ah it's all cosmetic true enough it was in here is a brand new windscreen a driver's door glass and the quarter light 101 quid I kid you not 54 pounds for a brand new beetle windscreen can't really beat that can you so uh, that's something else I've got a fine room for I think amongst all the other things I'm doing on Ralph's house I need to start putting a load of stuff in the loft because otherwise I'm going to be falling over it and uh, not all of it I need at the moment uh, I managed to find space for all my DVDs um, in the drawers under the bed but that's not, I'm not using them for anything else I've got plenty of storage space so they're alright but there are lots of other things because I really want to crack on with the front room that's a priority and uh, I can't do that um, until I've got some sockets in in the hallway um, I need one lower down a double socket down there and I also need another double socket up there that will be to power my doorbell and any CCTV that I've got in the porch because I want to change that at the moment I've got one of those ring doorbells uh, which has got a camera on it it's, it's great actually because uh, if I'm out or down the end of the garden it lets me know somebody's standing in the porch or indeed if the post has arrived so I definitely need a double socket up there and there'll be another one out in the porch a bit further down this, this corner is going to be complicated um, because if you ever want to hoover your car there's nothing worse than having to put a lead through your window I know we've all done it um, so I'm going to make sure I've got a socket that's out in the hallway that I can switch off from inside so I've got a fair bit of cabling to do there anyway that's by the by the windscreen and the driver's door and the quarter light has arrived and I may or may not create a new channel just for the rebuilding of that beetle I don't know I've got so many YouTube channels Trying to keep post tabs on it all. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Anyway, that was the post for this morning. Well, it's a bit sunnier this morning. Um, so we'll crack on, shall we? I know that's going to have to come down. Um, because I've got to take these posts out. But at the moment, I'm just pulling out these bits of the wood that uh, my father stacked in the roof. Some of it's junk, really, to be honest. Uh, anything that's worth saving, I'll save it, but I'm not short of wood at the moment, <laughs> that's for sure. So, as far as I can see, it's not fixed there. There might be a, yeah, there's a nut at the end here, I think. I should check that from the outside. And there's also these fixings. I can touch them with an angle grinder to get rid of those. One there, one there. And probably another fix in there. But of course these roofing sheets overlap each other to a certain extent anyway. But this is the first one. I've got to get that one out each side. And then, yeah, we should be able to unbolt that. Which will take out this bit of angle iron. And then we're back to the next structure. And then just keep going really. At some point... I'm going to have to push my camper out of the way, but I'm going to keep going as long as I can without having to do that. Because uh, when I do push it out, it's going to block the alleyway for a short while. So I don't really want to do that unless I have to. Look oh, where the snails get in here. They stick on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad to see this thing come down. I've uh, knocked the hooks out, uh, but now I've got these bolts. And they have... Well, a nut and bolt underneath, not worth messing about with. I should just grind those off. And then these panels should come out with a bit of luck. Right, angle grinder. Same with that one. Uh, just knocked it through with a screw. But that's actually free now, so I've just got to uh, grapple with it. So I need to go and get my gloves on. Yeah, just a bit of huffing and puffing and wiggling got one side off and the uh, the topper whatever you call that um, right so we'll just pull that side off and then we're right up to that supporting straight um, we're right up to that support 
So you see what I mean? If uh, you don't take that out, but I am free to dismantle this section. That's these front posts, they're going to be heavy, uh, but we'll topple them this way. And then we'll start taking these out one by one. Not sure if I'm going to lift them or I'm going to drop them. Don't know yet. Anyway, let's get that off. Yeah. Just got to take these off. Uh, I'm not even going to bother trying undoing the nuts and bolts on that. I'm just grinding them off. And uh, I need to unscrew that bit of wood. I think my father put it in just purely to put a socket on the ceiling for this bulb. Go figure that one. Yeah. Right, keep going. Working my way down these bolts now. And hopefully this post should pull away. Might just get this live on camera. Trapping it. Right. Keep going until it drops. Daylight. <laughs> Can't see anything holding it. Let's keep going. I suppose I'd better move, uh, move that out of the way and then I'll crack on with those. Yeah, it was a bit of excitement, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that's one side. Actually, I don't know. Those uh, slabs might be useful. Certainly I'm going to lay some across here to get that level. That side's all right, as far as I know. But it might be a little high. I don't know, that doesn't matter. And thinking about it, this camper can move forward at least two metres. So I could, in theory, demolish all of the garage apart from the last, or the last, two sections, which has got a door in it, and then just wall up this side and make it a sort of small workshop until such times as I'm re I decide to demolish the rest. Don't know. <laughs> right, we'll take out the other side. This time I'll try not to get my thumb in the way. Right, here goes. She's going. Well, I want that to go the right direction, so I'm going to pull it down. So I've got asbestos sheets there. Let's get a glove on. This is hard to do one end. Right. There we go. And then we'll whip them four panels out. And that'll be the first section. I should add, I am wearing steel toe caps. <laughs> should have said that at the beginning. Uh, not that if that fell on your toe, steel toe caps going to help you much. But uh, you should still wear them. Um, all these panels, they're just tied to these posts by these sort of Z-shaped brackets. And sometimes I get lucky. And I get one like this that almost turns by hand. Uh, but if I can't, and I can't shift it, I find if I wriggle these panels, got watch, can be careful what you're doing, um, you can get them free and pull them out that way. And uh, occasionally you have to grind the head off something, but I'm trying to avoid that because, uh, you know, you can't always uh, guarantee which direction the sparks are going, depending on what you're grinding. You see that robin? <laughs> Not bothered about me at all, is it? Well, might be a juicy worm down there. Yeah. So anyway, he was right by my feet a minute ago. Oh, he's gone. I waved my arm. Poor thing. I've come in for a nice cup of tea. Much needed. There's no one to make me one. Uh, so, you know, I have to stop. 
Um, and I'm going to conclude Ralph's house for this week. But if you are going to tackle a concrete garage, think very carefully about the structure. Um, make sure you're wearing gloves because you don't really want to be handling concrete. And uh, asbestos, it's fine to handle as long as you don't break it. Um, and you're gentle with it and uh, lay it down. And uh, most local authorities will take asbestos sheets as long as it's double bagged. Uh, you need to check with your local authority. But you certainly don't need to be paying 360 I think I was quoted, um, for taking it away. I think people have rather cashed in on, on it, really. And uh, asbestos, um, you know, those roofing sheets are pretty stable. The ones you, the, the asbestos you've got to worry about is that fluffy asbestos, uh, sort of thing they used in cinemas for uh, insulation and stuff. Uh, but asbestos sheets, they're fine. Wear gloves, wear a mask if you want to. Um, and, um, you know, just be careful what you're doing. You don't want to be dropping stuff and breaking stuff, and you certainly don't want to be breaking yourself. Anyway, so that's it for part one of uh, the garage demolition, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Anyway, leave a comment below, thumbs up and thumbs down. Up to you. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.